duress that we're all under. It's, how do any of us cope? I mean, it's mind blowing. <laughs> Again, it's amazing grace of God. <clears throat> and then look, look at the um, so the uh, lending industrial complex, the debt industrial complex, national, okay, uh, state, and uh, individual debt industrial complex. It was student loan industrial, all of that. It's all part and parcel. Okay, big business. 25% of people employed in this industry. Uh, it, it's mind-boggling. Okay, so all these people would have, you know, time free to do productive things like building houses, like working on the roads, okay, like working on the farms, like working to bring clean water to people, like walking, working to provide energy needs for people, the stuff we all want and need, working in factories, okay, all that stuff that's imperative to the welfare of society, all these unsung heroes, these people doing these jobs that are absolutely imperative to the overall welfare of society uh, to keep the wheels of society turning and yet they're marginalized as uh, unskilled workers and all this crap it's like who are you i mean that's evil that's stinking thinking and we have a propensity an inclination and we've got to confess it admit it and say that is evil god start changing my thinking man so with the mind observe the mind okay think before you think even about who you really want to be and be, whose eyes are most important to you. I mean, remember, no other human being can save your life. Your wife, your husband can't. Your children can't. Your parents can't save your life. Okay, we need God. So that's the one you want to please above all. That's logic. Okay, that's our owner. That's God Almighty. That's our divine parents. The first chapter of the Bible is God described as a we. We, because we are male and female. There's a feminine side of God and a masculine side. It's a very beautiful thing. I met a beautiful woman down in Santa Cruz this past week, a young woman, and uh, we got to talk, and if she blew my mind, I mean, she, she could have been in her 20s or 30s because she was so intelligent, so enlightened, so wise before her time, and this is how a lot of young people are, this Generation Z, okay, is that they know in order to survive, they've got to be something special. They've got to be like enigmas. They've all got to be omega men and women. And this woman, I won't mention her name, um, she knows who she is I'm from Southern California up here. And, but, um, well, I guess I could mention her first name, Holly, but um, she gave me, she ripped off a piece of paper. I'm going to keep it as a memento. And, uh, man, this woman, she, uh, she already found her soulmate. And, um, God, he's got good taste. But uh, if he flakes out, Holly, uh, hey, uh, man, oh, man, you would make a nice wife. And um, I don't care about the consternation I'd face from you being a lot younger human being. Um, there's nothing either illegal about hooking up with the age discrepancy between us, and there's nothing immoral, okay? But... Uh, and I don't care what society thinks because they're all, for the most part, insane, as I've explained. It's Unless you make a deliberate, concerted effort to not to be nuts in this society, okay, then you'll be nuts. And there's a whole lot of people walking around out there that can't imagine a world entirely without money. But Holly, the short time we talked, about 30 minutes, you understood. She knew what it meant to be an egalitarian, okay. A lot of people don't. They just, they can't, they don't understand equality. And she did. And she understood the things I was saying very easily. And she was taking notes. And she was a beautiful human being. And what I found most attractive about her was not her stunning physique. Uh, and she was no beauty queen, perhaps, but I'm very attracted to the demure. If, she's, if you look healthy, ladies, I mean, you're, you, I, I, look, I get attracted to older women, too. When I was 21, I had a 44-year-old girlfriend, okay, and I had no problem with that, okay, and, and if society, you know, uh, you know, if that was disruptive in some ways, sociologically or psychologically, that's tough. I didn't give a crap, so I don't care if it's the other way either, okay, it's no problem for me. I know it upsets people. I've heard Judge Millie on. She gets very upset when she hears of these older men with these younger women. And, but, you know, when she hears about these older women with the younger men, she would have been fine with my girlfriend of 44 when I was 21. 
So it's a little hypo- hypocritical. I think she needs to search her heart about that. But there's nothing immoral. What could be immoral about it? an older man with a younger woman? That is a beautiful thing. Plus, uh, if, if the older man dies while he's with her, she'll get his Social Security benefits as a survivor if she's married to him. But I'm probably embarrassing her because she knows that I run this uh, video series. And uh, But uh, she gave me her phone number and she gave me her website. And I'm not going to invade her privacy beyond mentioning her first name. And But I was definitely smitten and I would have married her the same day I met her. Say what you want about that. But uh, that's what happens when you're... Uh, a guy that has valued having a relationship with a woman more than any other guy, at least as much as any other guy on the face of the earth, but I've had to spend so long as a single man. That's the kind of thing that happens to you. But I see the female as the other side of God. I mean, it's such a beautiful thing, the feminine. So, you know, God, our parents, is a we. Okay, that's the point I'm trying to make here, is that when the Bible says that, you know, man alone, it's, it's not a good thing. Okay. And so this is something I've been feeling is just that I don't feel like I need a wife. I mean, I, not that I just want a wife. I feel like I need it. I need to be in love. Okay. It's not, so it's nothing I, you can ever abandon. There is no such thing as self-satisfaction. Okay. It's a very sad state of affairs. We always need to be striving, desiring to be in love. I believe in order to be happy. And God gives us a glimpse of that. We're not happy alone. And God is not happy alone. God is male and female. And he's expressing himself through us. And we're made in his image and likeness, male and female. So I know that there's a big departure from what I've been doing to satisfy myself for a long, long time. And the joy that a good woman would bring me. And I love women. I love the spirit of women. That demure feminine spirit is just so enthralling and so irresistible and just so compelling and magnetic and orgasmic and climactic. And it's just, uh, I, I just want to be absorbed into the feminine energy, yet stay independent so that I can please them. I want a happy woman. I want a happy wife. I want to give her everything she wants to be happy. I want her to be free and in the very nature of the feminine, godly nature that we all strive for, that she strives for. I strive for to be the male, godly nature and uh, to be free and to be happy and to preach that to the world and to bring that to the world. And, um, you know, she had that. She had everything, this woman. And, um, and there's plenty of other women, too. I mean, I fall in love all the time, I tell you. I'm in love with a local newscaster I've, I mentioned before. And, um, you know, exotic beauty that she is. No, I'm not. That's, that's too close to home to name her first name. But I already kind of I gave it away with a video I made. But I find a lot of women attractive. And I found plenty of older women attractive. As long as they are healthy and they have that demure quality. And I think that's something about God too, is that you know, he, he, he being, we refer to God as the Father. Jesus did this repeatedly. God the Father, the Father. He didn't mention, but he, he mentioned the mother, my, my, when people said, hey, um, your, your mother and brother are looking for you, and he said, well, what? I, who are my mother and my brother and my sisters? They're these that are doing the will of God, you know, that are listening to me and learning from me. Okay, so the feminine side of God has been largely omitted from Scripture, and I don't understand that because the power is not to be underestimated, the power of the female. Okay, think about this fact that every single man came out of a woman. Do you know how much respect and regard the men should have for women just for that alone? Just think of the pain that they go through and what cowards men are. That they, How much do men really understand what women go through? You know, I, I, I mean, if I was a woman, I, I probably would never, I'd be a virgin to this day because of the implications of, of, of engaging. I mean, what they sacrifice when they have relations with men, even if they're on the pill or using protection or whatever, open to abortion. I mean, it's still 
all very frightening that most men are far too cowardly to engage in as much as they love their sexuality. Would they really be willing to pay that price to have a, a baby coming through their, their genitals? I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, women need to be exalted. Where do you think women and children first came from? I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. So, yeah, I mean, as far as marginalizing and subjugating women, I, I, don't, I don't buy it, exalting them. Even though I, I say, hey, look, you know, I would like a harem of beautiful, satisfied, happy women. I, they, 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 so many of them are just so generous and, and just, they're just, they're God's finest creatures. Let's put it that way. So I struggle with that kind of that inbred uh, polygamist. Yeah, and that's a turnoff, man. And, and you know, I, I get that. That's why a man is supposed to have one wife. And if, you know, if she's making you whole, man, you know, don't let anything break you apart. Like scripture says, is what, what God has brought together, let man not turn asunder, okay? Break apart. So I believe in the one man, one woman thing. I really do. Monogamy, right? But, you know, uh, women need to be um, understanding to agree to a degree of what it's like to be a man. And that polygamous spirit that we all struggle with, King Solomon, he adored women. We look at all, all the wives and concubines he had. I mean, of all the things a man loves, it is union with the female. It, it's so cosmic and just so beautiful and so rewarding and it just, it just smacks of why God did everything. It, he wanted to because it felt really, 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 really good. Okay, it really pleasured God to create the earth, the universe, the galaxies, and everything contained therein. And he's given us a little glimpse of that in his generosity, the union of a man and a woman. I mean, they, they love their sexuality too and probably more than us. I mean, otherwise, what would compel them to have babies with us? They're awesome creatures. Awesome. And let all men remember that. And, you know, and women struggle too. They, you know, one of the problems in our society is what is the oldest profession out there? It's being a prostitute, right? So they struggle with thinking lowly of themselves. They do. And that, that is so evil. That's like Satan in, in there, you know, just because they're not at all. They're unclean, you know. I used to joke with my wife even. I remember when I met her in 1982. And even I had that in my head, you know, that I was worried that she was going to betray me, that she had what I call the prostitute mentality that is prevalent in society. This idea that women are worth more than men. And, you know, this is why you pay a dowry. And, 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 and as a man, I get it because look at thousands of years, prostitution, the oldest profession in the world, people, women paying to sell their bodies to men because it was so pleasurable for men, they could do it. The, you know, the women weren't paying for the men. They, why would they have paid to have sleep with a man uh, when they could uh, get paid, to, you know what I mean, to sleep with him? Hey, so women struggle with the prostitute mentality, and men struggle with the polygamous mentality, and the devil is in the details of keeping us at enmity, really. We, there's a lot of consternation between the genders now, especially with what's going on with all this stuff coming out of the closet with the men and the, you know, not respecting the women and groping and raping and debasing and, and, and victimizing the women. And it's, it's wrong. Of course, in every case, you can't force yourself on a woman. It is okay. I mean, what can you do about a woman seducing a man? But I have been in conversations with women where I felt like I was seduced, but they had no idea. That was the beauty of it. They were oblivious to how just their feminine, demure nature, and I'm talking about older women too, but it just comes through and it's like, wow, man, I am turned on. I mean, literally, like you feel aroused and it's like, holy cow, what in the hell? And they are oblivious to it. But... I feel it, and it's a beautiful thing. I love it so much. And, um, man, when a woman does that to you, you just, you know, you just want to, hey, you know, let's, let's, let's get hitched. Let's get married. Because, you know, I'm, I'm too old for this dating game and uh, the Internet thing. And I, I, I just, I want to do some, you know, happenstance kind of thing with a woman. Just, you know, it was a chance meeting. and Hey, you know, let's get married. 
you know, I'm kidding, but you know, at least invite her out to coffee maybe before you pop the question, right? I don't know if you want to have a ring on hand or not. I know I didn't with my wife. That was pretty stupid. But we were both very young. Probably not a bad idea to have a ring on hand, right? But I later gave her one and sold my motorcycle and bought her a beautiful ruby diamond ring that she didn't like that I had to trade in for an emerald ring, as I recall. But she still left me and she got to keep the ring, so it was a wedding ring. I guess engagement rings are things you can give back if somebody breaks up.